Hey there folks and welcome back. In this video, I actually don't have any new math for you. We're going to take our existing knowledge of calculus for vector functions that we developed in the last video and learn how to interpret it from a more physical perspective. In particular, back in Calc 1, chances are you saw the connection between position, velocity, speed, and acceleration. We're going to develop those same connections here, but in the context of vector functions. As a reminder, we've been working with these vector functions, r of t. They take in a single scalar input called a parameter and spit out an entire vector of outputs. If the output vector has two components, r of t traces some curve in r2. If it has three components, it traces some curve in r3. When I think about these vector functions, I often like to go back to the bug example. I pretend that t is time, and as time passes, a little bug walks along my parametric curve. At time t, the vector function r of t tells me the bug's position. In our last video, we learned how to calculate derivatives of these vector functions. The derivative of r of t tells us the rate of change of each component as we vary our parameter. So if we think of r of t as telling us the position of our bug at time t, Maybe then it makes sense that the derivative r prime of t tells us the rate of change of position. It tells us the bug's velocity at time t. So let's write this down. r prime of t, the derivative, is equal to the bug's velocity at time t. Now velocity is actually a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. If instead you just wanted to know the magnitude of the velocity, well, you're measuring the speed in that case. The speed is the length of the velocity vector. It's the norm of r prime of t. The last ingredient in this mix is acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if you want to know this quantity, you should take the derivative of your velocity vector. The bug's acceleration at time t is r double prime of t. Just like velocity, this is a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. If you just wanted to know the magnitude of acceleration, you should take the norm of the acceleration vector, just like we did here with speed and velocity. Okay, lots of information. Let's put it to use in an example. All right, folks, this example is going to put all of our knowledge from the previous slide to use. Here, we're dealing with a cow trapped in a tornado. At time t seconds, its position is given by the vector function r of t shown here. First, I want to compute the cow's velocity at a general time t. We'll assume that time here is measured in seconds. Next, in part b, I'd like to know the cow's speed when it reaches an altitude of 10 pi meters. Finally, I'd like to know the cow's acceleration when it reaches a time of t equals pi. So let's jump right in with part a. All right, so in part a, we're looking for the cow's velocity at some time t seconds. Well, in the question, we were given r of t, the cow's position at time t. Its coordinates are t cos t, t sine t, and 2t. Down here, I've actually plotted the cow's path as it flies through this tornado. Now, if we want the cow's velocity, well, velocity is the rate of change of position, right? So the velocity is the derivative of r of t. It's r prime t. As a reminder, I can get the derivative of this function by differentiating each component separately. So my vector is t cos t prime, t sine t prime, and 2t prime. It looks like in the first two components, I'm going to need the product rule. So in my first component, I take the derivative of t and leave cos alone. That leaves me with just cos t. And then I add t times the derivative of cos t. That's minus t sine t. In the second component, something similar happens. The derivative of t is 1, and I multiply by sine t. Then I add t times the derivative of sine t. That's plus t cos t. The derivative of the third component is just 2. And there you have it. It's that simple. This is the cow's velocity vector at time t seconds. Moving on to the second part of our problem, we're looking for the cow's speed when it reaches an altitude of 10 pi meters. As a quick reminder, the cow's position is given by this vector function, r of t, and its velocity is given by this function, r prime t. I'll also remind you that the cow's speed is given by the magnitude of its velocity vector, the norm of r prime at some time t. But what time? Well, we want to know the cow's speed when it reaches an altitude of 10 pi meters. The altitude of the cow, the cow's height, 
is described by the z component of its position vector. So our cow reaches a height of 10 pi meters when z, which is 2t, is equal to 10 pi. Dividing by 2, we find that this occurs at t equals 5 pi seconds. This is the time at which we want to compute the cow's speed. We'll start by finding its velocity at this time. Its velocity is r prime of 5 pi. We're plugging 5 pi into this vector here. That gives me cos of 5 pi minus 5 pi sine of 5 pi. In the second component, I have sine of 5 pi plus 5 pi cos of 5 pi. And finally, 2 in the z component. Now, ultimately, we want to take the norm of this vector to find the cow's speed. But first, I think we should try to clean it up a bit. We know that cos of 5 pi is minus 1, and sine of 5 pi is 0. So we can actually throw out these two terms and replace all of our cosines with minus 1. Its velocity vector is therefore given by minus 1, minus 5 pi, and 2. At this point, we're ready to compute the speed of our cow. The speed is the norm of this velocity vector, the norm of minus 1 minus 5 pi 2. That's the square root of minus 1 squared plus minus 5 pi squared plus 2 squared. If you simplify this, you should get the square root of 5 plus 25 pi squared. Using your calculator, you'll find that this is approximately 15.866 meters per second. Okay, to wrap up this problem, we need to find the cow's acceleration at time t equals pi seconds. Well, in parts a and b, we worked with r prime t, which we interpret as the cow's velocity vector. To find the acceleration, the rate of change of velocity, we need to take the derivative of this vector function one more time. Now, I'm not going to work through all the details because it's really quite similar to what we did in part a, but I'll let you check for yourself that our acceleration vector is given by r double prime t, and it has entries minus 2 sine t minus t cos t, 2 cos t minus t sine t, and 0 for the z component. Now we're interested specifically in the acceleration at time t equals pi. So by plugging in pi for t, I get an acceleration vector r double prime pi, which is minus 2 sine pi minus pi cos pi, 2 cos pi minus pi sine pi, and 0. Now just like before, we can simplify this quite a bit. Sine pi is 0, cos pi is minus 1. So we can throw out our sine terms, and we should simply be left with pi minus 2, 0. That's the cow's acceleration at time t equals pi seconds.